Hello friends of the channel, welcome back. I want to do a little bit of an overview here on how I'm using the Power Probe 3 uh, to basically measure the output of this new alternator that I just installed on the Mustang after I realized that my uh, existing alternator uh, took a crap on me and uh, was not put in, uh, outputting any power. And let me tell you how I arrived at that in case anyone's new to vehicle electronics and alternators and all that stuff. Basically with these one wire alternators they uh, have a single wire hookup that goes directly to the positive side of the battery terminal which would be over here. Uh, in my case I'm running a uh, 10 gauge, I'm sorry, 8 gauge wire from the alternator to the uh, starter solenoid which is directly connected to the battery to charge the battery. Um, what caused the uh, incident yesterday with having to tow the vehicle home was nothing more than a faulty alternator uh, voltage regulator inside the alternator which basically was just not pushing any power out to the battery. So the car was running on battery power, running the air conditioning and this dual Durale fan setup which draws um, 25 amps for a single fan and 50 amps for a double. I was just running one fan at the time. So nevertheless the poor battery couldn't put up with it and just went kaput. Hence that's why it's been on the trickle charger for the entire day and it's only at 64%. So. Luckily, since I had the 302 budget build, I had had an alternator uh, in a box that I was going to install on that motor and decided to install it on this one to start doing some voltage tests. Now, without further ado, monitoring the power probe is really great because it will tell you the exact voltage output at any given time. And right now, it's connected to the positive side of the ter uh, battery terminal here and it's showing we have 13 volts, which is a straight up solid battery. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start the car and you're gonna be able to see what the alternator now is putting out. So let's go ahead and fire it up and without turning anything on, I'm not gonna have the fans on, I'm not gonna have the air conditioner on and I'm gonna show you what the output is on the alternator. So let's start looking at alternator draws. charging at a beautiful 14.6 volts, which is ideal. That's what you want. You want two volts higher than what the typical flat battery voltage is. That's going to charge the battery, two to two and a half volts. So let's go ahead now and start giving this, giving this alternator some competition and let's start giving it some draw. Let's first throw on the fan. You'll notice that it stumbled there and realized that it needed more voltage. It detected a 25 amp draw and it kicked up the voltage regulator to still output 14.5 volts. That's ideal. Now, let's give it some AC and see what happens. I'm just going to simply turn the AC on to a normal, standard blower speed. We're down an entire volt. We're still running at 13.6, which is 0.5 over what it should be, but we're not at an ideal 14.5. Now, we're at an idle. Let's give it a little RPM. Back up to 14.4. With the AC running, we're going to turn the fans off, which is never good. And it goes back to handling it just fine. Fans back on. Has a little bit of a hard time compensating for the low RPM. Now let's check our RPMs and see where we're at. Vacuum reading. 
operating well. Normal vacuum. So what we probably want to do is increase our curb idle for the time being. There it is in gear, so we drop a little bit more, which I can guarantee you drop some more on the uh, power probe. So I'm gonna to wanna to give this a little bit more uh, curb idle. Try to compensate for that voltage drop at idle. Let me go ahead and grab a screwdriver. Bingo. That's ideal. That's where we want to be. Now, for all intents and purposes, here's the voltage gauge that never made it into the car that will be going in now. We're reading at a beautiful a little over 14 volts, which is exactly what we want. Curb idle. Put the car in drive, put on brake, which is tip, which is what you want to test at. There we are. The only other piece in the puzzle is to get that voltage gauge inside the vehicle and take a look at what the voltage. Make sure we're over 14 volts when we're at a dead curb idle. Uh, if we're not, then we need to adjust the, the base idle to get it up over that. That's what I'm going to do anyways. Um, I, I want that battery charging at all times. You don't want it going flat. Now, we're not taking into consideration um, actually cruising down the road because of course that'll kick up, that'll kick up the, uh, the charging on the car. So, 14.4. Let's turn the car off and see what our battery's at. 180 degrees, good oil pressure, my vacuum gauge is kinked, it's not hooked up, I have it uh, hooked up to my holly up there. Now let's take a look at our power probe and see what our flat battery voltage is. 13.3. So basically in that bit of time, we actually gave the battery some charge, which is exactly what you want. Now, the other thing I'm going to note with this one wire alternator is right now you'll see that it's hooked up to my uh, alligator clip on my power probe. This is a solid ground source. This is, it's grounding the alternator through the power probe. Uh, some of my, uh, I did note that the, the alternators themselves do ground themselves against the block, but the, the trick is if you have a painted block, you could have a uh, possibly a uh, erratic ground. So you always want to make sure you run a nice gauge wire off the alternator to uh, the chassis or preferably the engine block uh, to properly ground it. I did notice 0.2 volts difference if that alligator clip is not connected. So definitely ground your alternator in addition to running the correct size wire out to the battery. So I hope this helped anyone that was uh, anyone that's really tr kind of troubleshooting an electrical issue. Uh, I don't care how pretty an engine is, if the damn thing is stuck in a parking lot, it's as good as a paperweight or a really uh, heavy, <laughs> heavy paperweight, I guess you could call it. So if you guys don't have the right tools, uh, definitely seek professional uh, advice on troubleshooting this. The only other issue that I'm running into is that this little Durale fan controller is not turning on my fans automatically nor is it turning on my secondary fan. So 
uh, that's also going to account for a power drop too. So I still may need to upgrade my alternator to 150 amp rather than 100 amp. So um, I will make that determination once I get to it. But mathematically speaking, uh, my calculations are 50 amps on the fan, approximately 28 amps on the air conditioning system, and then you got your miscellaneous lights and whatnot. So I'm I'm pretty much pushing it right there with a 100 amp alternator. So I'm probably going to go ahead and do the upgrade. Uh, and pay the difference over at Tough Stuff. They were really, well, really, really, really helpful uh, and want me to send back my old alternator so they can go ahead and replace the voltage regulator on it for free. So this will be going in the vehicle. All I gotta do is get a mounting pod for it and I'm gonna kinda tuck it away because I don't wanna lose my vacuum gauge and my triple stack. So, all right guys, a little bit of a long-winded video, but I wanted to visually demonstrate the Power Probe 3 in action, how you can use it to your advantage or really any multimeter to your advantage and how you really can't shoot in the dark when it comes to stuff like this because without knowing those numbers that's the difference between you getting back home in your car or riding home with a tow truck so all right guys thanks for watching later